Okay. I would like to thank everyone for uh, joining us this afternoon for the Tendency Newsletter training. Uh, we're going to go over a few different steps in um, using the newsletter generator to create newsletters for your Tendency website. If you guys have questions at any time, feel free to stop me. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the training PowerPoint. Hi, welcome. You just joined us. We're just getting started. And uh, we'll also flip back and forth between the training PowerPoint as well as one of our training sites to take a look at how it actually works on a Tendency website. So let's go ahead and get started. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Let's take a look. So what we're going to talk about today um, is making newsletters using Tendency. Tendency allows you to generate content. Uh, the newsletter generator in Tendency allows you to generate content automatically from other modules, um, including the content manager module, the calendar events module, uh, jobs, memberships, um, as well as resumes and uh, other modules as well. You get to edit the newsletter before you actually send it out. Um, and you can also have targeted uh, distribution to specific user groups. Um, so you could have different messages for different types of um, members for your organization or clients. And you can also create personalized templates for a more professional look. Um, a lot of you guys may already have templates in your newsletter module. If not, um, we can talk a little bit more about that at the end of the training, what, uh, what needs to happen in order to get you a custom newsletter template. Each Tendency website comes with a generic template, um, and there's quite a few generic templates in there. Hi, did somebody have a question? Build a green. Build a green here. Hi, build a green. My name is Hi. Hi, welcome. Um, I guess it's all ladies in the training today. Um, my name is Carrie, and uh, I'm with Shippel. So I was just saying, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, stop me, and we can go over anything that you have questions about. Um, and if you can't, if you're speaking, and for whatever reason I'm not responding, <laughs> it may be because I can't hear you, you can use the little chat screen to... Um, uh, type in a message. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to go back and forth between the training PowerPoint and an actual one of our training sites. We're going to go over um, organizing the user groups and tendency. Uh, we're also going to talk about formatting the newsletters, um, how you can customize newsletters, and best practices for um, newsletter distribution. So first, let's take a look at um, user groups. And uh, let me switch over to our, uh, oops, too many things open here. All right. To our training site, which is beta.shipple.net. This is a site that we use for our webinar trainings, and we use it internally for testing. Um, to create newsletters, you have to be an admin on the site. Um, or you can specify permissions to specific users to allow them to use the newsletter generator. One of the first things that you need to do, of course, is organize your um, recipients of the newsletter into user groups. So you can check out your newsletter uh, user groups in the user groups module. From your console, click on other tendency modules and scroll down to where it says user groups. And it's going to display all the user groups for the site. Um, there should normally be a user group uh, called newsletter. That's one of the default user groups that gets created. You can create new user groups uh, for any particular purpose and add folks to them. People can add themselves to user groups. And we're going to show you how to do that in a second. So for somebody coming to your site, a site visitor, they can add themselves to a user group by completing a contact form 
um, registering with the site and choosing their own groups on the site uh, self-registration page or joining as a membership uh, joining as a member and selecting what groups they want to join so for example um, if they submitted a contact form and they checked one of these boxes then they would be added to the search engines um, user group or they would be added to the direct mail piece user group or if they were interested in donations then they could be added to the donations user group the contact form on your site um, is not editable by you but if you need changes just let us know and we can make those changes for you and customize it to display whatever information that you need and the reason why it's not editable is because it's a form um, and it has to have certain functions in the background um, which can't be displayed in an editable area we do have on this particular site editable area at the top where you can add um, your own content if somebody was registering on the site bring up Internet Explorer here Let's see so if they were joining they wanted to register as a site user then they could add themselves to the user groups here or if they were joining as a member I'm not sure if the membership is set up to have user groups associated with it. What it would be the same. Um, this particular membership doesn't have user groups, but if it did, it would be it would look the same as the self-registration page with the little check boxes at the bottom over here. So you can customize all that as well. Admins can also add users to user groups and there's a few different ways you can do it you can add um, single users one by one or you can do an import of users and add them to a user group uh, through the import you can also do um, email addresses to groups and you can also use the user group manager so let's take a look at all the different places where you could do that as an admin so I'm going to click on the tendency icon here and it's going to take me back to the tendency console so if I were going to add an individual user click on search search for that user here's our user right here um, click the user record and then I could click on groups and it's going to show all the groups for the site and then I can add that user to the group so now that I'm in the users profile if I click on show my groups it shows which groups that particular user is a member of I can also go back to tenancy click on manage users I can do a user import uh, under C user import utilities upload user DB text file I would format my import using the template um, and then I would be able to select a group to add the users to uh, using the import if the users that I would like to add to the user group are already in the database I can do another method which is bulk user group utilities I can use email addresses to groups so if I had a list of the email addresses I could just paste them in here select the group and then I can either add them or remove them from the group using this tool um, and that works for folks that are already in the database if they're not in the database then you have to do an import you can also do SQL to user groups if you know some SQL um, you can write a SQL statement that finds specific users based on the criteria that you're searching and if you need help you can just contact the support team and they will help you with getting the SQL um, they can't write the SQL directly for you but they'll get in touch with the programming team and the programmers will tell us what SQL to use and then we'll tell you <laughs> so we're not all well versed in SQL but the programmers are um, any questions so far 
No. Oh yes, one other method, um, the user group manager. Um, if you are tenancy manage users, you can go to user group maintenance, user group manager here. It's going to bring you to the user group manager or you can also get to it from tenancy, other tenancy modules user groups that brings the search view but there's also a link here to manage groups so you can search a specific user group view all the users in that group so right now there's three if you wanted to add additional users to a search you can add click on them and then view all the users and then it'd be like okay um, let's take this guy out and they're gone. I'm finished. Take me to my group. So this is the detail view of the user group. It shows how many members are in there. If you click this, it'll show you who is in the group. I'm going to open it in and actually if you click this icon next to it, it opens it in a new window and displays all the people that are there. Again, if you click this, you go back to the Add Remove page. Go back there. Um, you can export the members of the group. This displays the group permissions, whether users are allowed to add and remove themselves, and what module the user group is associated with. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. Technical information when the user group was created, who the owner is, um, and if the user group is set to submit notifications to specific email addresses. So this is Carrie, a, Yes, go ahead. Um, when you can when you said that you can export members of a group, yes. what how what what fields will show up on their will like what information from their profile will show up in that export? Um, let's do an export and so we can take a look. Thanks. No problem. Let's open. All right. So you have all the the database information: user ID, the GUID, um, the user type ID, user type entity. So there's that type of information: member ID, language, first name, last name, initials, login name, display name. It's mostly user information. Um, it looks like most of this information is going to be coming from the user table. Uh, their security level, uh, different notes. So those, it looks like the admin notes and notes are there? Yes, admin notes and notes are here. I don't see um, functional title. Is that on in the uh, user table? You, I'm not sure if you would get that from this export. You may get that information by doing a straight user export. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, let's go back a couple pages. Okay, so we, this is this is all good stuff if you already have the user group and you already have the people. Are you adding the people to the user group? But what happens if you want to create um, a user group? So starting from tenancy again, you can either go to manage users, click on add a user group. You want to give your user group a name. Um, The group label, um, you can specify a different label from what the name is. So you can have a detailed name and maybe a prettier label. And the label displays on um, user group options for content manager forms. And uh, the label also displays on the self-registration page. It's essentially, where's this stuff? It's whatever the label is, is what, what appears here as the name of it. Um, 
Can that be changed at a later date? Yes. Is there a way to edit it? Like, say you call, you label it something, and then three months you realize it's not a good label, and you want to make a change. Is that possible? Yes. So I'm just going to give them different names, um, so we can tell the difference. The entity, it's always going to be the default um, for your website. The reason why we have entity here is we have some clients that have more than one website that share the same database and each website has its own unique entity um, and you want to be able to specify which entity is associated with what but in most instances you guys are just going to have one database with one website and it's going to be the default so you don't really need to mess with this. We have different types of user groups. Um, the basic type is going to be distribution and then we have another type called security you can send out communication to both distribution and security. Security user group allows you to specify um, add members to that group and give that group permission to view and edit content manager pages and that's really um, the only difference between distribution and security. Multi-level, again if you had more than one website associated with the database um, you can choose this stuff. We don't really mess with this, we just leave it as default. For the email recipients, if you have um, particular user groups, let's go over here and look at the contact form, and so each of these check boxes um, would be a user group. So if I check this box, I would be added to the memberships user group. And you can specify in the memberships user group if somebody comes to the contact form and checks this box, then whatever, who's, whomever's email address is in here, they would get a notification saying um, somebody was interested, check that box. They had checked that box on the contact form. Typically, whenever a contact form is submitted, the recipient of the submission is the email address that is in site constants. Um, but if you have email addresses in here, then those people will also get notifications. Does that make sense? Um, can you maybe say that last part again? Okay. Typically, whenever you submit a contact form, the contact form submission email is sent to the person listed in Site Constants as the site contact recipient. And we can take a look where that is. Um, so for this site, these would, oops, these would be the email uh, addresses that would receive contact form submissions. But if the person checked this box, this box is associated with the memberships user group. And if the memberships user group, let's take a look and see who, memberships, 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 here it is. So if I edit the memberships user group, if there was an email address in here, then whoever's email address was in here, they would also receive a notification that a uh, contact form was submitted and that box was checked. So if you had multiple groups, you could have different notifications, like you would have the main person, the person listed here, this would be the main person, but you don't necessarily need to have all the different contacts for all the different user groups insight constants because they would be getting inundated with contact forms whether or not they needed to know. Um, so you could have the television person receive a notification if somebody checked that. Just have their email address in the television user group. The direct mail person would get a notification if somebody checked that. But they wouldn't get it unless the box was checked. They Does that make sense? Maybe a little bit more sense. No, not at all. Um, it makes sense. It seems like it's like a CC, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a CC, but only in the case of if somebody chooses that. Yeah, that makes sense. If they don't choose it, then these people are always going to get it no matter what. But the special, special case, people would get it here. And again, the email addresses that you have in here uh, for the recipients, they don't need to be your email at your domain, it could be any, it could be a Gmail, Yahoo Mail, you know, whatever email because um, these are just the recipients of the contact form submissions.
the next option in the user group uh, portion is whether or not you want to allow folks to add or remove themselves. Display option allows the admin to see the group, allows self-add and allows self-remove, um, gives the option for users to be able to add and remove themselves. So if you were, you had a, um, let's go over here, you, if you had people that were able to log into your site either as site users or site members, um, they would be able to edit their own profile and they would be able to go to their profile and add or remove themselves. Like I see everything here because I'm logged in as an admin. Um, let's see if I log in. Whoops. I'm going to go over here and find a user profile that I have and log in as that user and show you the difference. Um, I guess I'll do this guy. Okay, so if I look at my user profile as a, this is a member profile, click on groups. I only see 14 groups, but as in, where's my thing? Where's my thing? Where's my thing? Can't find my thing. Here it is. As a as an admin, I see a whole bunch more. And hey, Carrie. By the way, yeah. um, we're at we're at the point of our process of determining our user groups. What's the most? What's the maximum number of user groups you've seen? And is there any best practice? Like, we're we're, we're wondering. Like, you know, is fourteen kind of normal? Is thirty obnoxious? No. Um, I really haven't seen. Uh, there, is, there is no maximum. You can have as many as you need. Um, and as long as you can manage all of them, by all means, <laughs> have as many as you need. Uh, we have some clients that have, uh, especially the clients that have multiple sites with one database, they ha they, it's not unusual for them to have hundreds of groups. But they're all being used for different purposes. So it's really what you can um, sustain question, Carrie. Um, yeah. In the display option, so even if you had to like allow self-add, self-remove, mm -hmm. check, but mm -hmm. then you uncheck display option, mm -hmm. that means that person couldn't see it, right? Or that, who can't see it? That's correct. The users wouldn't be able to see it, and the, the, uh, the admin wouldn't be able to see it either. It would go poof. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> So, what does that box do? <laughs> it, sh it, you could have, uh, let me see, for the display option, you could have it checked and have these guys unchecked and it would be an admin only group so that the admin could add people to it um, at the admin's discretion. Right. So, okay. the original reason why it's there, because I mean it doesn't really make sense why you would have it there. I'm sure there is some other reason that is not known to me, um, but I can check on it. Who's that? Who's that? No, I was just kind of, I was just kind of running through the scenarios of when you would, you know, check one and not check the other, and yeah. I couldn't figure that one out. Yeah, so that's, that's no. fine. So we we pretty much always want to have it checked. You do want to have it checked. Um, the only, the only time, well, really, these two guys are more important. Like if you were creating a security group you would probably you have to uncheck these guys because then you, you wouldn't yeah. want anybody adding themselves willy-nilly to the security right. group. So right. I'm going to leave these guys checked. Um, the other, the next options are show the user group as an option to be associated with the following modules. What that does is if you want to send out newsletter to this particular group then you need to associate it with the newsletter module. If you want to allow folks to be able to add themselves whenever they um, register on the site, you want to add it to the user module. If you want, if you're creating content manager forms and you want it to be an option available on a content manager form, then you want to associate it with that module. Um, and so for whatever module you want to have the user group associated with, you want to select the module. 
Um, there are some there are options on here like for example forums. Yes, you can associate the user group with the forum, but right now there really isn't any functionality uh, that happens when you do that. Um, the the association part is built in. Um, and the functionality part doesn't exist yet. So in the future, when there is functionality, this part is already done. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and submit this uh, user group. And so now I've got... What about the view? The anonymous site user and member view? That means that they can view what? <laughs> if you set it up to... Allow anonymous, allow site user, allow member view. That means anybody can see it. Like when they come to register as a site user and it's selected, it'll be visible. If you uncheck anonymous view, then they won't be able to see it unless they're a site user view, and they won't be able to see it um, here in their profile when they're logged in. If you set it up to be member only view, then they have to be logged in and a member before they can actually even yeah. see this. So by okay. default, you want to leave all this uh, checked. You can also um, set up an autoresponder and you need to contact support in order to facilitate that because we have to actually um, add the autoresponder file to the server um, and it's in a place where you don't have access to so we can do that. Um, and and that, the, that does what? What happens with that is when somebody they submit the contact form uh, once they submit it, then they'll get an email themselves saying thank you for submitting the contact form. Somebody will be in touch and you can have additional marketing um, information in there. It's just an email that gets sent to the person submitting the contact form. The other options, um, status, if it's active or inactive. If it's inactive, then you can't really use it notes, admin notes, owner user ID, this is my user ID, and this is just detailed technical stuff saying I'm the one who created it. So I have if a we've... question about the, the user ID. Um, uh -huh. Is it possible for many people to add contacts to a user group, or is it only the owner? Anybody that's an admin can add uh, members to the user group. Regardless of owner? Correct. So from this page, I clicked on View to see the detail view. And then I can click on, uh, and it gives me all the technical information. I'm going to click on Add Remove, add some people to the group. Um, <coughs> so add myself. Oops, not that one. Remove. Add this guy. Um, and uh, hey, Carrie? Yes, ma'am? Can you search by things other than name, like um, if you had a, a functional title of contractor? or architect or something, do you think that search feature would capture that? Uh, we have an advanced search, uh -huh. which allows you to search by these options. And you Great. can put general stuff in here. Um, let's see what happens. I guess all these people have Houston. Let's put um, San Francisco. Yeah, well, I don't know if that would come up with anything, because we, yeah, we, you know, it's just our, our test database. But that's great that there's other ways to pull up people. Yeah, I don't know about the functional title. Let's, let's see if we have anybody that has a title. Like, does mine have a title? Let's just add a title. Ooh, I'll be a lawyer. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. So, where was I? Oh, here we are. Nope. Doesn't search by functional title. 
Um, I guess it searches by whatever's on here. We can add that request as well for it to allow um, search by other options. So yeah, it could be helpful. To the programmer uh, queue and see what they say. Great. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so we've added all these people, view all the users. I'm done. Take me to my group. So again, we see the detail view. And that's pretty much how you add uh, users using the different methods, how you add a user group, and then add folks to the group. Um, and you also, okay, removing folks from the group, um, you always want to give the users the option to opt out of your newsletters. Um, whenever you send a newsletter from Tendency, at the bottom of the newsletter, it's going to display the um, opt-out capabilities. And I have some samples over here. So at the bottom, uh, this doesn't show it because I d it's not an actual newsletter. Let's see here if I have any newsletters in box. Hold on a second. Oh yes I do. Alright, so this is an, a newsletter uh, from one of our other clients and then at the bottom here it uh, gives you the option to opt out. So it says you're on the staff. This is the user group name list for the client name. If you no longer want to receive this letter, follow this link. And then what that will do is it will unsubscribe you from this group. If you no longer want to receive any emails at all, follow this link. And what that will do is it will set your user profile to no email. Uh, then can you tell when you're looking at a user group list, you know, of a, the, the users who are part of a user group, who has opted out of a list and who's opted out of complete emails from the organization? If they've opted out of the list, they won't appear in the user group. Um, so if you go here and view all members, if they've opted out, they won't even appear. Um, if they are set to no email, let's set this guy to no email. Um, what it does is it sets receive email to no. And so they could still be in the group. Um, uh, refresh. Where is it? Oh, and it shows this little envelope right there. Which would indicate that they're not receiving email. It's usually red but it may be because of the, okay. s the styles associated with this particular site. It looks white, but it's typically a red envelope. A red envelope if they're not receiving any email from us. Correct. Okay. All right. And then, and then you said if a person opts out of a list that they just stop showing up in that list. Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't show okay. up at all. They just okay. All right. Thanks. Terry, one, one additional question. So you said that if they set up to be no email, you know, that in the profile it would be set to no, but you said they'd still stay in the list? They'd still be in the user group? I, you know, I think it, it really does take them out of the group, but for purposes of, like, illustrating what their profile would look like, uh -huh. um, this guy has the, has the envelope. So we could sneak a peek. Um, we're going to send a, I guess, let me put this guy back on. And we'll send a test, and then we can go. We can walk through the process once we send the test. Does that sound okay? And then, the, yeah. And then the other question you might be able to answer while we're looking at this is, um, if it's admin, add delete. Um, if they can't do self add delete, mm -hmm. how do they? And they get an email from us. Mm -hmm. What does the bottom look like, and how can they take them off? Cells off a list or not, or how? To, how does It'll that look the same. Whether or not they added themselves to the user group, the bottom is always going to have this stuff, and they're always going to be able to opt out. Okay. All right. And you definitely want to have that uh, in there um, so that you're compliant with spam regulations. And if people, well. We recommend that you don't add people to uh, distribution groups without their permission. Um, 
and always give them the opportunity to get out of it. Um, so they could opt out through their user profile or through the links at the bottom of the newsletter. Um, any questions so far? So as the admin on the site, um, you'll always have access to manage your user groups. Sometimes when you have um, on the contact form, you have this other option. Sometimes whatever folks type in here, user groups get created with whatever words they use in this option. So you may have to go into the user groups and uh, where are we now? Go back to this guy. Nope, not this place. Let's go over here. Go back into your user groups and tidy up um, the other options. So, for example, you know, people could be just typing in weird things that you may need to clean up. There's a couple different options. You can go to, again, Tendency Console, click on Manage Users, and then you have the capability to append user groups, merge user groups. Let's take a look at each one. So this will, this will add um, members of one user group to another. You can merge, uh, move, one, move members of one group to another and delete the uh, source group um, using the merge user groups tool. And you'll need, for both of these options, you're going to need the authentication string from the site, which you can get from your project manager or from the support team. Um, in order to do these uh, merging user groups and appending user groups. All right, so we talked a lot about user groups. Let's take a look at actually creating a, a newsletter uh, using the tendency newsletter generator. We're going to walk through the process um, from generating the the newsletter to sending it and hopefully we'll be able to get one uh, during the course of this training. We're also going to talk about formatting using the WYSIWYG, um, inserting images and other tips and recommendations that we have. So let's just dive right in. So starting from the Tendency Console, again you click on the newsletter generator. You will first need to select a user group that you want to send the newsletter to. Create the, you will use the one that we um, just created. Um, if you have, uh, you're an organization with members, you can send a newsletter directly to your members. Um, by checking this box, you don't need to use a user group. And what Tendency does is it looks for all the active members in your database and then it sends the newsletter uh, to those members. So if this newsletter was sent out to members only, there would be no option to uh, remove yourself from the user group because there is no user group. You would have to remove yourself completely. Um, that's the difference for newsletters that are sent out to user groups versus newsletters that are sent out to members only. So let's go ahead and choose the user group. You have the option to include email to. Email to is the uh, secondary email on the user's profile. Email, email to, right here. So if they had another email, you could send it to both. Okay, then we have the subject, and you can change this later. Uh, you can personalize the subject with first name. So if it was first name, then it would say, Carrie, comma, Shipple Beta Newsletter. Uh, 12th August 09, or first name, last name, Carrie Gale, comma, Shipple Beta Newsletter, or just last name, Gale, comma, Shipple Beta Newsletter. Let's have both in there. You, This is where you get to pick the module content, or you can not include any module content and just make a completely custom newsletter with the content that you want. I'm going to go ahead and keep the module content for now. 
So include login information, what that does is it adds a little section in there um, that tells the recipient this is your username. Uh, to get your password you're going to have to click this link to reset your password uh, because we can't send passwords through the newsletter. Uh, through email it's not secure but there is a link that's provided for them to be able to go to the website and reset their password. You can include jump links. What jump links are, they're, they're like anchor links at the top of the newsletter which jump you down to the content. Um, you can choose to include or skip. We're going to include for the sake of the demonstration. Calendar events, you get to specify date range and you can include or skip any of the following um, content from any of the following modules. I'm just going to leave it as, as the default. Um, this particular site only has two templates. Um, this is the default template. Let's take a look at it. I just clicked on the, on the word and it opened up a, a new window. And again, very basic. This is this, the default. It's not custom at all. Um, the one that we looked at earlier is this guy. They have like a little header graphic here. Um, and then there's this two column. So open in a new tab. Again, very basic. Um, if you have specific uh, a specific look that you would like to incorporate into your newsletters, then you can either have us generate and build the template and stick it on the server for you, or if you already have it in HTML or some other form, send it to us and we'll convert it and put it on the server for you, and then it'll be an option uh, for you to choose down here. So I'm going to just choose the basic one. Format, um, you can choose detailed or simplified, and there's some examples, so I'm going to look at detailed. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is detailed. It has all the information your sponsor, speaker name, day, location, summary. If I go back to simplified, it just has a briefer view here, just day, location. And these are the jump links that we talked about. So we click on articles. It's going to jump down to the articles. And this is a pretty um, custom newsletter template. Um, since this newsletter template was created, Microsoft updated their Outlook software. And so I know that this newsletter template is not um, compatible anymore with Outlook because Outlook doesn't um, show background images so all the stuff that's going down the side would just break um, once it got into Outlook but it would look great in Gmail <laughs> if that's any consolation. Um, so we don't recommend making newsletter templates look like this anymore but this was before um, the Outlook update. Uh, let's go back over here. Okay so we looked at the detailed simplified view just gonna leave it as detailed and then continue to step two. You will still have the ability to make edits before sending. Click. All right. So over here is where we get to edit our newsletter. We can view it. I'm going to view in a new tab. That's what it looks like. Not a lot of stuff. Not a lot of stuff. Um, on our training site. I'm going to close this, I'm going to close this, 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 this. I'm going to go back here. If I click on here, I can edit the email. And this is a new top secret uh, link. We're working on a new uh, WYSIWYG editor um, that we're debuting with the newsletter generator. So we'll take a look at that in a second, this top secret. I'm going to open this guy. It brings up the WYSIWYG. Content type uh, is either going to be text or text HTML. You want to leave it as HTML because if you change it to text, it's going to strip all your formatting, all your images. It's, it's just going to be a plain text email. Um, sender display, this is the name uh, that appears as the sender. Uh, sender email 
and replies to email, recipient email. Um, typically the sender email is going to be, um, what is that now? Do not reply tendency at shipwell.net. And the reason why we have this in place is because uh, for spam compliance, uh, we recommend that you leave this in place in order to make the newsletters that go out more compliant with the spam rules and so that your newsletter doesn't get filtered by spam and junk filters. Um, the display name would be this name right here. Um, and if you, whatever email address you have put in the reply, if you hit reply, then it would go to that email address. Recipient email, you can add additional emails in here and they would go to the emails uh, listed. Even if that person wasn't in the user group that was specified to receive the newsletter. Uh, here's the subject line which you can edit. Uh, take that out. Here's where you can add more information. Uh, I have a but, quick question on that sender, the sender email. Uh -huh. the, the sender email, like if I'm sending it from my organization, is it going to be shipful or is it going to be build it green? It'll display whatever is in the display name, which can be your name or your organization name. And then it's going to have okay. that. It's going to have this information after. So, so it's going to say do not reply, reply dash tendency at shipful.net. Yes, it will. If, okay. you, if you don't want it to say that, then there is a site setting that you can use to override it. Um, but again, we don't recommend that you do that because that would um, increase the chances that your email may get filtered as spam. So back to the edit view over here. Um, all this stuff is, is by default. This is the login information that I was saying. So over here it says username and then it has in the brackets username, password, has in the brackets password, but it's not actually going to display the password. This little area is going to translate to a sentence that says something to the effect of to reset your password, click here, and uh, then they'll be taken to the website in order to do it. Uh, Carrie, quick question with that. Yeah. So what if, what if your user group is... Um, non-interactive users who don't log in, will that still show up? You don't have to choose that option whenever you create the newsletter. Okay. So if you go, let's go back to here and to the newsletter generator. The reason why that is showing up is because we checked this box right here. Include login information. If you don't check it, that section doesn't even show up. Oops. So this part won't even appear. Oop. This part, this whole part. It's like it wasn't even there. Um, and we've selected all the different modules, but sadly there's no content on this uh, beta site. So the only thing that's displaying right now is a little bit of directories. Uh, we can go back over here, click on pending actions, and this takes us to where, um, click here for newsletters that have already been sent, and we can take a look at some of the newsletters that went out previously. Uh, this was in July, so it had a little bit more information, had some events so over here, and the directories. Let's go back here, go back here, all right. So let's see, adding... added some text and then I want to format it so it looks like the rest of the guys so highlight it go here choose my font choose my size uh, I'm gonna leave that and then submit and then I can view it okay so I have my extra text in here so say I wanted to add a an image to this newsletter um, first thing I would need to do is add the image to the site um, and then embed it into the newsletter. So close this guy, close that guy. So this is where we left off and I clicked on view. I want to come back um, and edit email. There's a couple different ways that I can add my image. So I'm going to add my image right there. So I'm going to go here, insert image. 
I can browse. Let's see. Mm. Mm. All right, water lilies. It's happening. I'm gonna upload. Oh, it had a space in it. Let's try another one. Browse. Let's do winter. Upload. Ooh, it's a big. It's a big um, image. Ooh, it's a giant image. Uh, let's make that smaller. Oh, maybe smaller still. Okay. So now it's here. I need the URL to be the absolute URL because the image is going to be displaying in an email that someone's going to look at in their email program. And it's not going to be associated with the site. So it needs to have the absolute path to the website. And I click insert and it adds my image here. I don't want it to be there so I'm going to double click it. It's going to bring up the uh, properties again. I'm going to set the alignment over here. And now it's over there. I can just move it over here and it'll be on the right. Um, and then when I hit submit and I view my email, there's my image. Um, if you had, go ahead. Um, I don't know if I quite, un I understand the reason about the absolute um, path, but if, does the image have to then be hosted on your website then? I mean like yes. a lot of the images I would use would be like on our server here. So how do, how do I create that? You would need to have the absolute path to the image wherever it is. So if it's if it's not on the website, if it's on uh, a different web server, then you would have to have the path to that web server. If it's not on a web server, then you need to upload it to the website. So you could upload it through the WYSIWYG, uh, which is one method, or you can uh, go over here to Tenancy Console go to the files module and add a file okay thanks that makes sense okay and then you would get the path right there you would copy the whole path uh, copy go back to your marketing action and then hit insert image and then paste the path into the URL and then, of course, this is also giant, and we recommend that the images that you use be the actual size that you need them to be. So um, then you would insert, and then again, you could format it wherever you needed it to be, alignment left. Um, you could add a border or not, um, whatever you needed. You can also make the image a link, select it. Uh, Click the link. Okay, see that added the border. I don't want the border. I'm going to say border is zero. That take the border away. Hit submit. And view. And now I have two different images. If I click this guy, oops, I made a bad linky. So let's go back over to here, edit, select this guy, break the link, relink it. Alright, make sure it's the right one, looks right to me. Close this guy. Oop. Who's that guy? Alrighty. It looks like it's doing something. Alright, there we go. Um, other things that people people often do with their newsletters is they link to PDF files, like click here to download the PDF for more information, or click here to download the sponsorship registration PDF, stuff like that. So you couldn't actually embed the PDF in the e in the email in the newsletter. So again, you would have to upload it to the site and then 
link it in your newsletter. Are there any questions so far about editing um, in the in the WYSIWYG? Things that I can recommend, um, a lot of times people copy and paste from Word, and Word has its own proprietary code that can make things look um, strange, have unexpected results, um, and can mess with the formatting. So we recommend that if you are copying and pasting from Word that you use the Paste from Word tool and that cleans up all the Word code. Um, or you can use the cleanup, uh, cleanup HTML to, to remove all Word specific markup and uh, clean up any cascading style sheets or uh, font or span tags. If for whatever reason you're trying to format something and it's just not you try to change the color, you try to change the the font weight and it's just not doing it. You can use the little eraser tool to remove the format completely and then reformat it um, using the WYSIWYG. Mm. Let's see, I'm trying to think of any other uh, tips. And okay, so you're working on it, you submit it. This doesn't actually send the newsletter, so say you've been working on it and then you have to go away and come back. So say you come back the next day or a few hours later and you want to continue working on it, starting from the Tendency Console, you would click on Pending Actions and it would be the first one in the list, assuming that nobody else has come and made another newsletter after you. Um, this is the Status detail equals open, which means newsletters that have been started but haven't been finished. So you would you could come back, click the pencil. It's going to bring you to this page. Then you can edit it and uh, do whatever you need to do. Submit it, and then you're ready to go. So if you're ready to send it, then you would um, you review the user group. open a new tab so it displays all the people that are going that it's going to go to then I want to click on step 4 and agree to the agreement and then this brings me to step 5 and once I check the box for step 5 um, the newsletter is going to go and once I hit send it's it's going we're not going to be able to stop it um, once it hits the queue before I click on this guy I'm going to sneak a peek here at the new editor um, that we are currently working on that's um, that is already out there and available on your website um, but it's still in beta meaning it's not been uh, I guess publicly released and it looks like this they're still working on it so it still definitely has some some stuff to do um, but it's bigger uh, we're hoping that it'll be easier to use than our current um, WYSIWYG um, and it looks totally different from the other guy. Um, it has a lot of the same options. Um, we're hoping that it'll be easier for folks to, to use because we've had some feedback um, from clients that say the WYSIWYG is sometimes difficult and cumbersome. Let's see, let's change the color. Orange. Okay. Say if I want to make this one red. Alrighty. Okay, so let's see. Save. Oh, and you also have this amazing save and continue editing. Hooray! That's exciting. I'm excited about that. And then save. I'm done. And then you want to view it. Okay. So change my stuff. Totally different. Mary? Yes, ma'am. Question: When you hit, when you went with step five to send it, is it possible to set up to send later, like as a queue? Hmm, that's excellent question. We don't have that functionality, but I'm going to make a note of it uh, and suggest that to programmers. So. 
once you hit it, it's going to go. So let's go ahead and send it. So it's scheduled to go within the next 10 minutes, um, but it may take several hours. How it works is first come, first serve. Um, we have many different clients that may be using it at any given time. We have two different mail servers that send out the newsletters. And so if you have another, uh, if there's somebody else ahead of you in the queue, then you have to wait for that news newsletter to go through before your newsletter will start to send. So sometimes we get um, reports back from clients saying, hey, you know, I sent this newsletter at noon and it's three and it still hasn't gone. And then we take a look and see that, oh, we have somebody ahead of them that's sending 15,000 newsletters and it's taken a little while. We're working to make that process a little faster for everyone. So uh, we have some new um, updates to the mail servers that we're using and changing the way we send the newsletters out. So hopefully you guys will continue to see improvements in that area. Um, we can click here to check the status and this will take you back to here. And it says the email has entered the queue for processing. So if you go away, you come back and you're wondering what's happening to your newsletter, you can always check on it by going to pending actions. You can choose uh, submitted. Take a look. This means it's submitted. It's in submitted status, meaning it hasn't started sending, but it's in the queue to be sent. If you click here and it's not here, then the next place you want to look is in progress and hit submit. Once it starts to go, it'll be in, in progress. Once it hits uh, that, once it starts sending, then you know it's on its way. Um, and then once it's completed sending, uh, it'll be in closed. And these are all the guys that are in, clo in closed status, meaning they've already gone through. So if it was closed, and this is not the one what we just sent, but we can take a look at this guy as an example. At the bottom, it's going to have a little recap. And what the recap shows is the emails that were sent out from the server. This, the recap is not an indication of the emails that were received, um, but the emails that were sent out by the server. So if somebody had... Um, incorrect email address or anything like that, it would be noted in the recap. Or if they were not receiving mail, it would be noted in the recap. <coughs> Excuse me. Any questions so far? All right, well, let's skip back over to the PowerPoint. Uh, we talked about editing the content. Uh, we also talked about adding images. Um, using the files module and then adding um, using insert image. Ooh, sending to a test group. We recommend that whenever you send uh, your newsletters out, that you send them first to a test group of maybe internal uh, internal staff members or you and maybe a couple other people, just to make sure that what you receive in the newsletter is what you are uh, expecting to go out. So just to make sure that you know, the images are showing up, all the links are working, before you send it to the newsletter group with the 10,000 people. Because like I said, once, once, it hits, once it gets submitted, we can't stop it. Um, it has to go. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, come back here, PowerPoint. <laughs> All righty, so let's take a look at our newsletter. Has it gone? Has it gone? Oh, it's not in submitted. Oh, it's not in progress. Does that mean it's gone? Yes, it has gone. Hold on, let me see if I can find it in my inbox. <clears throat> Okay, so my image is showing. No, what happened? 
not sure what happened with my images. I will blame the new beta um, WYSIWYG. That's what I'm going to do. So you can see where the password information was. If you've forgotten your password or need to reset the auto-generated one, click here. That takes me to the password reset um, portion of my website. Now, I'm at the bottom, it shows the newsletter training user group. If I no longer want to receive this letter, follow this link. If I no longer want to receive any emails, follow this link. Click that guy, and it takes me here. So let's see, uh, so it set my profile to receive email equals no, and we had a question earlier that said does it take you out of the group or does it just set you to no? Let's take a look. Carrie, me and Camille need to jump off because we're getting kicked out of the conference room. Well, thanks so much. Oh, thanks for joining us. I'm making a video of this. I'll send the links out. Oh, great. Oh, thanks. Cool. Right. Thanks. Thanks, ladies. Nope, that's not the right group. Hold on a second. Here's the group. Newsletter training user group. Well, I guess it left me in the group, but it did remove, it did set me to not receive email. And that is the answer to that question. What other questions do you guys have? Nothing? Nope, I'm good. All right. Okay. I also get an email, which is the recap, um, that tells me how many emails were attempted, what were bad, um, how many were processed, and to view the recap, go to here. Now, if you wanted to just be able to send a email that didn't have any of the um, module content, you can go through the newsletter generator and choose not to include any module content to send this. And then you would be able to create a totally custom um, email with whatever content you wanted. Custom content here. I'm going to put my image back in there. Disappointed my image didn't come through. So make it smaller. Oh, got to add my stuff. The other option that I also have is <clears throat> I can create an article of the newsletter and one of the benefits to doing that is you're adding new content to the site and every time you keep adding new content to the site, every time the search engines come and search your site and they see new content, it helps you uh, in your organic rankings. Um, so anytime you add content to the site, it's always to your benefit um, and helps your site be better indexed by the search engine. So I'm going to check that box. I'm going to send this email again. So and then I have two different links. I get a link to edit the related article that was just created. I'm going to open that in a new window. And then I'm going to check the status over there. So this created an article for me. I can edit it. updated and then when I click on view that's what my article looks like if I look at the article search it's going to be listed as the top article there um, let's close this guy 
All right, this is the one that we just uh, submitted. Is that the one? No, that was the one from July. Go back to pending actions. This guy's still in submitted status. Um, so while we're waiting for him to go through, what questions do you guys have? Um, Carrie, yes. when you had the, um, when you were setting up the email, the sent to email, and you had do not reply, yes. and below it you had a reply to email box. Mm -hmm. So could you set up a separate email if they wanted to reply to the newsletter, or is that supposed to have the do not reply as well? No, um, I know it's, it's a little confusing. Um, the do not reply email um, indicates that it's coming from our mail server uh, which is a dot .shipl net um, uh, email address so the sending email has to match the mail server or else it can be flagged as spam so but if if you hit reply it's actually going to go to whatever you had specified in the reply to okay Another thing that I uh, wanted to mention was a lot of folks nowadays have um, a lot of social media connections. You have your Facebook, you have your LinkedIn, you have your Twitter. You can also include that information in your um, newsletter. Um, having links to your online presence um, in Twitter, Facebook, and Flickr, and all that kind of stuff. And on this tendency um, newsletter, we have the little uh, logos in there and links to our online stuff as well as in the Shipple newsletter. So for this Shipple newsletter, it has a custom template um, and all of this stuff in here is custom made, meaning somebody actually sat down and, and put it together with the images and stuff like that. They didn't use a lot of the module content. Um, to make the newsletter. Same with the tendency um, newsletter. So just as a general, I guess, rule of thumb, you can be as creative as, creative as you want to be with the newsletters. Um, and it's, you know, I would, looking at this newsletter, I would say that it probably took about a couple hours to put together. Um, and then, of course, you know, send out a test, make sure it looks okay, and then once it looks good, then we send out the actual one. So that's gone. Is it in progress? Oh, it's in progress right now. It means it's going out. Um, and hopefully we'll get it in a second. Oh, here we go. Did it, is it gone? Oh, it's gone. See, I got my little recap, but I haven't got the email yet. I'm sure it'll be here in a minute. So other options, once you've sent your test and you're satisfied with it, you would come back to pending actions. You would go to the newsletters that have already been sent and then you would want to clone your newsletter and then send it out to the main um, user group, whatever user group that was. Then you would hit clone and then you could view or edit it again, take a look and see who's in, the, in this big user group. A whole bunch of different people. And then once you're satisfied, then you would accept and then send it, and then it would go on to the main group. And then once you're done, uh, once the newsletters have been sent out, um, you can track to see how effective the newsletters are. Are people coming to the site? Um, 
have the visits to the site increased. Um, and you can use the reporting tools to look to see if there were specific actions that happened once people um, receive the newsletter. So Tenancy has a whole bunch of reports. You can take a look at your site. Go to Tenancy and click on, um, let's say, click on articles. Click on reports. And look here. Did the in number of article views increase? Um, you can go back to Tendency, click on these reports. Look at that guy. And this is going to show the actions on the site. So every time there's a little envelope, that means that a newsletter was sent out. And so let's see. Let's see. Well, this being the beta site, I don't anticipate there's a lot of action going on because it's not really a public site. If we look at the PowerPoint, you'll see on this particular site, whenever they had a newsletter go out, um, there was a spike in article views. Um, again, newsletter went out, this went up. If you go back to the beta site, apparently after this newsletter went out, there was some serious testing going on in memberships. Um, but all of your sites have the same reports and you can get to them by going to Tenancy, clicking on reports, and then this is one type of report that you can get. Um, and then, of course, the different modules have their own reports as well. What other questions? Okay, well, um, we can take a look at some troubleshooting. We oftentimes get a, a, some questions into the support team saying, sent my newsletter out, it shows that it was sent, but folks are reporting that they didn't get it. A um, couple reasons, they could not be getting it because it could be getting um, filtered as spam, um, and they may not be aware that it could be in their junk, uh, junk mail, or uh, they may not be receiving it because it could be getting filtered at a network level. They may not know. Other questions um, we get are, I formatted it this way in the WYSIWYG, and when I got it, it looked totally different. Why, why is it looking like that? You want to make sure that you weren't copying and pasting from Word. Or if you do, um, you use the Word Cleanup tool um, to clean up all the Word code in there, which can have unexpected results. Um, and then if you have other problems, like we had one client email support saying, uh, why is it, why is the layout looking like this? It doesn't look like this online. And what was happening is one of the images was really large in the, in the uh, newsletter and it was breaking the layout when it got into the email program um, and things like that. So if you do have questions, um, Make sure you send your test email and take a look at it. Make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. And if you have questions and you need help, just let us know and we can take a look at it for you. Uh, we also have help files online that walk you through setting up uh, user groups, adding people to user groups, sending out test newsletters, cloning a newsletter, um, and other, other topics to do with newsletters. Well, really, that's all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening, y'all. That's really all that we have for the training this afternoon. Um, what questions do you guys have? I am good. None right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you uh, have any questions, um, I'm going to be sending out an email recap, uh, which, and I'm going to make a video of this lovely training we had is it'll take a it'll take a while for the video to be converted so the video is probably not going to be ready today but I will send a recap out 
um, that'll have a link to this PowerPoint uh, for you guys to download and contact information will be in there if you have questions um, and just be back in touch. You can either contact me directly and I'll have my info in there or you can contact the support team. Okay. I appreciate you sticking with me this afternoon. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all okay. have a good afternoon. You too. Bye.